from somewhere in Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Have I ever had sex with an illegal alien? You bet. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Appreciate your patronage. Uh, let's talk about money. I love talking about money. And... Uh, you know, uh, every once in a while, you have to adjust your approach if you're, like, investing. You have to constantly be uh, keeping your eye on that stuff. The more time you devote to, uh, you know, reading the Wall Street Journal, reading Barron's, watching CNBC, subscribing to websites like Morningstar.com, um, the more, um, I think, money you're going to make, honestly. I... Uh, Personally, may I brag for a second? I do it every day. Why not? Beginning of this year, I knew we were heading for a recession. I knew the stock market was uh, in a world of hurt. I knew that the whole mortgage thing was going to collapse. So I took a substantial, a substantial amount of my uh, holdings out of mutual funds and applied them instead to the mortgage on my new place. And the result is I've gotten the uh, monthly payments reduced from over $10,000 a month down around four for a place I paid about $3 million for. So uh, that money could have been languishing in mutual funds and sliding with the rest of the stock market. Instead, it's essentially earning about a 6% return because... Uh, it's been used to reduce the amount of the mortgage uh, that I had that uh, was running uh, at five and seven eighths. I have a mortgage at five and seven eighths. So uh, my personal finances are doing well. And I knocked the uh, balance on my mortgage down by more than half in the first month that I owned it, in the first month that I owned the property. So um, every once in a while on the program, I like to talk about money with you. And the reason I like to talk about money with you, I am not, by the way, a registered financial planner. I'm not a certified financial planner. I'm not a stockbroker. I am a self-made multimillionaire. And just like uh, when I advise you guys on, uh, on getting laid uh, with money, I made uh, every mistake in the book. I was near bankruptcy three times. When I was in my 20s, because, uh, moronically, I used uh, my credit cards uh, to pay the rent. I used my credit cards to pay for things like uh, the phone bill. And then eventually you're paying interest in all this stuff. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Uh, the only thing I believe in having, uh, you know, in paying interest on ever is a mortgage because the uh, up to one point one million dollars in mortgages are deductible. So that's the one and only thing I believe in paying interest on. If you're paying interest on your Visa card, if you're paying interest on your Mastercard, you're a moron. You're an idiot. You're buying things you can't afford. If you're paying to rent money, you're buying things you can't afford. And we talk about getting laid. What you guys don't understand is. The more money you have, I'm not saying the more money you spend or the more money you give to chicks. The more money you have, the more attractive you are to chicks. There is a direct correlation between the level of women you can attract when you have money than when you don't. Your goal in life is to make money. Not because money itself is so important. 
but because you will see the difference in the females you can attract. I'm not exaggerating. Ever hear these morons call in and go, well, if it wasn't for your money, women wouldn't go out. Hey, what's wrong with that? I don't give them the money. I don't pay them to go out with me. I mean, maybe you should take something from uh, that, that argument that people make. If you believe that women only talk to me because of my money, maybe it's time you started making, saving, and investing more money. Because you will get a better grade of chicks. And one way to have more money to make, save, and invest is not to give it to women. Not to marry women, not to give them gifts, not to spend money taking them out. I tell you this all the time, but now I'm taking what we teach and like is one want a step further. Because what I'm saying is, what do you do with all that money you've saved? Well, this is the other part. This is the other shoe dropping, okay? You save that money, you put it away, you invest it properly, prudently. And uh, if you don't have enough education uh, to make enough money, you go back to school and you get yourself some education. And that doesn't mean uh, a trade school. It doesn't mean a community college. It means go back to a real college. Get a real education. Because people with college degrees make more money than people without college degrees. It's that simple. Don't use me as the example. I'm in incredibly lucky and incredibly determined, and I worked very, very hard. Probably harder than you are willing to work. I wouldn't recommend this to anybody. I would much rather have finished college, and if I could have afforded to, I would have. I would have. So my recommendation to you is this. Simple. You need to save more. You need to invest more. You need to pay off all debts except for a mortgage. I don't want you having a car loan. I don't want you having a, a car lease. Forget it. Drive a cheaper car. Learn the joys of owning a Toyota Corolla or a Honda Accord. Seriously. Or a Honda Civic. Or uh, some kind of hybrid. Seriously. You know, instead of driving cars you can't afford and spending money maintaining them and, uh, and doing all the upkeep, get yourself some basic transportation. In fact, um, I recommend uh, if you can't afford a new Toyota Corolla or a new Honda Accord or a new Honda Civic, get one that's one year old that was traded in at a dealer where you'll pay a lot less for it. And many times these cars have been uh, reconditioned, and uh, in some cases, check with your dealer. In some cases, they actually uh, uh, they either honor the existing warranty or they extend the warranty after they've done a reconditioning program on certain brands of cars. So I thought that uh, because uh, you guys ask for it, and because I do believe that... Uh, Man's motivation to make money is to get chicks, whether it be to becoming a rock star or a radio talk show host. I will admit to you point blank that my first experience in radio at 14 years old, I picked up the request line. I was 14, and there were chicks who were inviting me to come over to their house. And I saw the power of that. And I said to myself, you know what? <laughs> Uh, this this is something I want to do for a living is chicks dig it. I was 14. And then uh, as time went on, I realized the more money I made at it, the hotter, the better the chicks I was able to get. And um, if I told you that's not a primary motivation, if I told you that uh, having a 20-acre ranch, the, the primary motivation isn't uh, panty removal, I'd be lying to you. I'd be lying to you. No doubt about it. And again, a lot of money to buy a 20-acre ranch, but the 20-acre ranch is all mine. <laughs> I'm not giving a chick any money. That ranch is mine. So, you know, it's like when you take somebody into a bakery and they can smell a loaf of bread baking, but they don't actually get to eat the bread. You know, chicks will come to my 20-acre ranch because they can smell money. They can smell it. This is not an accident. They call money dough, boys. You know what I'm talking about? So come to my 20-acre ranch, but ladies, you're never going to touch that cashola. Never. You're not going to get your hands on it. 
You can sit on my brand new furniture. You can look out at the amazing views. You can walk the property if you like. Try walking 20 acres. It'll take you an entire day or more. No doubt about it. Seriously. But, uh, I mean, come on. <laughs> Chicks go crazy just, just saying 20 acres to a chick. It, you can see them melt. It's shameless. So stop being a loser. Stop renting money. Stop paying interest on your credit cards. Stop having car loans for cars you can't afford. Stop leasing vehicles that you can't afford. Look, if you, if you make good money, uh, enjoy yourself, okay? But uh, I'm talking to you boys who are just starting out. Uh, you boys who are uh, trying to figure out you know, how things work. Rule number one, never rent money. Never rent money. You know, years ago when I was a kid, you could write off the interest on credit cards just like you write off mortgage interest. You get a car loan, you can write off the interest. If you paid a lot of interest on your Visa card or your MasterCard, you could write off the interest. Not anymore. Not anymore. So you shouldn't be paying interest if it isn't tax deductible, period. Home equity loan, okay, if you can get one anymore. Uh, mortgage, okay, fine. But uh, if, if, if you're paying interest on your Visa card, that means you're using it too often at Subway and Starbucks and it's time to scale back. Seriously. So if you've got questions about money, uh, we don't do this on any regular basis. Every once in a while I look at the mailbox and I see it's flooded with requests and it is now flooded with requests. So your questions about money as we continue. Tom Likas. Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. I hope that you're writing down all these hours that you're spending on the radio because these are public and community service hours, sir. You are doing a community service. You are spouting truth and telling these dumb people that I see all day long to use condoms and stop procreating. Right. You are doing community service, sir. It's the Tom Likas Show. 97.1 Free FM. SoCal's FM Talk Station. It's the Tom Likas Show, 1-800-5800-TOM. <laughs> By the way, uh, on another note, listen to this email I received that has nothing to do with money. We'll get to your money questions in a second. What a listener writes in and says, Tom, I've listened to your show for a few years until now. When you said some racist crap, that really pisses me off. Now I'll only listen to 97.1 until your show comes on. Then I'd rather have to listen to easy listening puke instead. Excuse me. I heard on your broadcast about a, quote, white radio station. With, quote, white music, white capitalized, W-H-I-T-E, by, quote, white artists. You made a mockery of it in favor of your filthy brown invaders in Los Angeles. I'm just reading what this guy wrote. That's it. By the way, the subject line says F you. Finally, after decades of anti-white racism, pro-black, pro-brown, pro-gay racism and sexism, someone has the backbone and fortitude to raise a white station. And it draws nothing but criticism from Tom. Well, Senor Tom, hasten the day when a carload of brown illegal alien gangbangers opens fire on you for being, quote, white, or T-bones your ass, AZC, in a hit-and-run accident, or locks, or kicks in your front door and beats you over the head with a pipe while trashing and robbing the place. Then we'll see how much brown <laughs> sycophancy you can muster. You'd think that after someone stopped a mud hole in your ass, AZZ, in an alley, you'd have a little more sense of mortality about you, but no. 
The great Tom dances the cucaracha while he denounces, quote, whites for daring to show themselves. Let's see. We have the NAACP and its awards. No whites allowed, whites in quotes. We have Latin Grammys. No whites, quote, allowed. We have BET Awards. No, quote, whites alone. We have Black History Month, Hispanic History Month, yet no white days or awards. The Emmy does black and brown worship, so does the Oscar, even the CMA, which one would think was, quote, white, actually sucks up to the likes of Cowboy Troy, who is a darkie. But let someone dare to have, quote, white anything, and they are trashed by liberal communists as being supremacists or separatists or any of a dozen demonizing racial slurs. Tom, you are the worst kind of racist there is. One who denigrates and slanders his own race. You're one of those liberal scumbags who thrill at saying, some of my best friends are, insert minority here. I had little aversion to your sundry mud races, mud races, okay, until I was accosted by them again and again over the years and now have half of my pay taken away by the government and handed to them so they can procreate all day and deface the whole state with spray paint. Not to mention the spinning hubcaps and boom boom radios I have to buy for them so they can drive by, shoot minority four-year-olds in style. Then I have to pay for the millions of dollars of life-saving surgery to try to save the four-year-olds so they can rejoin the millions of other minority spawns swelling our schools, turning them into gangster mills, and I have to pay for their millions of bastardos and bastardas to have free breakfast, free lunch, and free after-school care, and when they have bloated themselves on free food stamps to the point where they are rolling in diabetes, well, I get to pay for their treatment, too. All I can say is, F you, Tom. F you and all your sorry minorities. Just to remind you, the, quote, whites you hate so much are the very ones who created and built everything you enjoy today. It may surprise you that people like Planck, Newton, Watt, Milliken, Einstein, von Braun. Wasn't he a member of the Nazi party, von Braun? Yeah. Ford, Morgan, Woolworth, Wright, Oppenheimer, and Barnard were white. Compare those contributions to those of such greats as DMX, Michael Jackson, 50 Cent, Shakur, Simpson, Barry, Bradley, Ramirez, even Carver. George Washington Carver? The cotton gin was a pretty important invention. All your minorities can seem to do is trample it underfoot until it resembles the trashy hellholes that they came from. Have you been to Darfur or TJ lately? They look a lot like downtown Linwood and Bell Gardens, respectively, and it's not coincidental. So take a break, Tom. You don't have to be a white-hating S-bag every day, you know. He didn't say S-bag. So there's a perfect listener for, for, for an all-white radio station. There he is, right? That's who's going to tune in. By the way, I'm curious, why would a guy who feels that way live in a city like Los Angeles? Seriously. I mean, this guy is so consumed with hate. Why be here? You want to go and go to Salt Lake City and live with the guys who came up with the white format in the first place. Go live there. Come on, you got Utah, you got Wyoming, you got Montana. Go, go live with your kind. But uh, definitely K-White. It's right down the dial. That's your station. One white artist after another. Sponsored by Clorox. Whitest station on the dial. <laughs> Unbe He's all upset that I was making fun of K-White. I'm not making fun of it. I think that even people like you deserve to have a radio station. And this is it. Amazing. All right, uh, money. That's what we're talking about here. And just, of course, when you get a good racist letter, you got to put that on the air. One of the rules of talk radio. And of course, I'm not reading that letter because I agree with anything the guy said. He's a complete moron. <laughs> 
a low IQ idiot who deserves to be crushed underfoot. But what are you going to do? All right, one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Let's say hello here to Josh on the Tom Likas show. Tom, I got a question for you. Yeah. So I'm thinking about trading in my truck. Um, it has some deferred maintenance that has to happen. It's going to be some some fairly extensive stuff to get done pretty soon. But they're offering me zero percent financing on a new truck. So I'm not really renting money. Uh, you know, what do you think about doing something like that? Well, let's start with this. First of all, how much do you spend in gasoline in that truck? Do you really need a truck? Yes, I do. I do. You I do. use it for work. All right. Okay, so you you need it. Yeah, you carry around big items. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. And the zero percent financing is that zero percent for the entire life of the loan, or zero yeah. percent for a limited time only? For the entire life of the loan. All right. When you get offered a deal like that, you have to look at the total cost of the vehicle at the end of paying off the loan. And that means if you have shopped around for a truck like that, um, just because they're offering 0% financing doesn't mean you're getting the best deal. Because uh, sometimes what happens is uh, when you get 0% financing, they build that into the cost of the vehicle. Okay. So uh, you have to look at the total cost. So if you've been to another dealer and that dealer is offering you uh, a, a truck and he's saying, well, I'm going to charge you a 7% interest on that car loan. If the total cost of the vehicle after the, the length of the loan uh, is is less than, than buying it at 0% financing, you have to look at that. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Let me tell okay. you. Let me tell you something else. Uh, are you using a car buying service like AAA or Costco? No. Why not? I don't know. I've never even thought about it. All right. Well, triple. Do you have AAA? Yeah. Yeah. Tri and Costco. Well, AAA uh, has a car buying service, and so does Costco. And I've I haven't used Costco's yet. I have used AAA, and here's how it works: you call AAA, you tell them what make and model of car or truck you're looking for. Uh, and what they will do is they will send you to a local dealer, but they will send you to the fleet manager, not the, the usual uh, showroom, okay? Okay. When you go in there, they will show you the actual cost of the vehicle and all the extras, and they will show you the amount of profit that is tacked on, and it is uh, you will see every item itemized. And I will tell you that when I bought my first Lexus, I saved over $4,000 over the best offer uh, that I'd had to buy that Lexus at, at another dealer. Wow, fantastic. I had no idea. Yes. So you should definitely explore that before you make a final decision on, on, on the truck you've been offered. Fantastic. Well, thanks. And, and by the way, that, that you might end up getting a loan where you pay 5 6 7 8%, but always look at... At the total cost after all the payments have been made, four years, five years, whatever it's going to be. Okay, very good. And see what that total is, because that's how you decide where you got the best deal. All right. Well, hey, no, don't don't look at how much the payments are, and don't look at uh, what the interest rate is. It's all irrelevant. What matters is the total cost of owning the vehicle after, if it's a five year loan, after five years. Okay. Great. Thank. You. Thank you. Good luck. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Uh, let's say hello to Mark on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How you doing? I'm okay. Good, good. Uh, I'm calling in. You know, I have some major car problems. Well, I haven't had them yet. I've uh, been leasing a car for about 10 months now, well, almost a year, and I've made about four payments. Oh, uh, why is that? Why is that? Um, you know, just the job was the two jobs that I've had, you know, uh, just different jobs weren't paying out what they were paying and it just became very difficult. And I know the better thing to do is turn the car in, but I can't afford to do that because I won't be able to get to a, a real job. I'll be able to work at like Del Taco or something. and It's not going to work out for me. Well, you might need to drive a used car. I don't have money to buy a used car. Mm. Not even a cheap one, like one of these smart cars. What's that? Um, no, these I don't. These little that. vehicles that have just come from Europe called smart cars? Um, not aware of that. Yeah, I mean, when you say you can't afford a vehicle, there's cars for $10,000, cars for $9,000. Uh, have you looked at any of those? Um, no, I have not. All right, well, that, that's what you ought to be looking at because you know what, pal? That's what you can afford. 
Right. Well, what, I mean, what I, are you doing I, leasing a vehicle? What are you about, like leasing a BMW or Mercedes? What are you leasing? Exactly, a BMW 335. What, what made you think you could afford that? Well, I was able to afford it for a while, and then. I was, but but uh, for a while is not good enough. You have to be able to afford it for the length of the of the payments you'll be making. Right. And, and did you have any reason to believe that you'd be four or five or three years making that kind of money? Absolutely. So, what kind of business are you in? Uh, right now, I'm in uh, exporting and importing. So, what happened to your business? Um, just the market just fell apart. I mean, just in the market that I was in. The market fell apart. Is that because of the declining dollar? Uh, yes, of course. Well, you know, uh, six months ago, we knew about the declining dollar. Hadn't you heard about it? <laughs> oh, I should have paid attention then. Uh, you well, know, kind that's of my point. With, uh... You see, you've got to be reading this stuff all the time. They, you know, the, I know people are bored by it. But you would never have made a commitment based on your continued uh, success in the import-export business if you if you knew the dollar was going to continue to be devalued. That's probably true, yeah. And that is also the reason why gasoline prices keep going up. It's because the dollar is worth less and less. Right. So, uh, first of all, you shouldn't be leasing a car. Because you right. can't afford it. And, you, and by the way, you leased that car because you couldn't afford it anyway. Come on. You could not afford a BMW, so you leased one. So you already true. knew you had problems. What were you? See, this is what I talk about all the time. You're living above your means. Very true. So step one in your life is, you know, concede who you are. You you clearly don't make as much money as you want people to think you do. I'm starting to now. <laughs> well, you know, stop trying to impress people. Right. You, you can lie to chicks, but uh, don't actually spend the money. Right. So uh, how much time do you have to go on that lease now? Another two and a half years or something like that? Yeah. Yikes. Well, I'm expecting a huge tax return, and I'm, all that's going to go to the car. It's going to go uh, to making, making you current or turning the car in? Um, <laughs> well, the smart thing to do should be turn it in. Right. Probably to get current, honestly. Yeah, but you, there's no reason to believe business is going to improve for you in the near future. Do you understand yeah, that? That's true. So then you're going to fall behind on your payments again. That's a possibility. Uh, the best thing you can do is to try to negotiate a settlement uh, with the dealer. Right. Okay. Rather than to get your... Because you know what's happening? You're killing your credit. You're killing it. Yeah, it was good when I got it, obviously, and now it's garbage. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, this is the kind of thing you show the thought ahead about. I mean, you, you did this. Yes. And, and the thing is, you had a red flag. You knew you were in trouble because you tried to lease... You had to lease a car you couldn't afford to buy. Right, and by the way, it, it's just as it's just as uh, disadvantageous to be leasing it because you still have to pay the maintenance on that car. You still have to pay the insurance on that car. You can't right. afford that. No, it's difficult. <laughs> right. Yeah. So uh, any time you think you might be late making a payment, it, that's money you can't afford to borrow. It's that simple. How much are your monthly payments on that? Five hundred dollars. A month. Yep. That, so that's six thousand dollars a year. Right. Right. So you realize for for ten thousand dollars you could buy like a Honda Civic. Yep. <laughs> and it's yours. And you get forty miles to the gallon. Yep, it's true. What are you doing? Cost me about seventy bucks every four days to fill up. Pal, let me tell you something. When I was your age, I drove a piece of crap. And then when I bought my first new car, it was a Honda Accord. Right. I was not driving BMWs and Mercedes, okay? Right. And that you shouldn't be either. You're not a BMW guy. <laughs> hey, you're not. The hardest part about this is admitting who you are. Right. Okay? When <laughs> You think it was easy driving a 1976 pale yellow Chevy Nova with no air conditioning, no heat? You think that was easy? <laughs> and having to explain that to people? You think that was... No, it wasn't. So what should I have done? Done what you did? Leased a BMW? No, I suppose not. Right. You got to get yourself out of that lease. Absolutely. Good luck. All right, Tom, can you blow me up? I certainly can.
Lycus. Tom Lycus. You're just looking for sex. Of course. You must be a new listener. You must be kidding. You think that's what makes people happy? That's what, I'll tell you what, that's what makes men happy. It's the Tom Lycus Show. 97.1 free FM. SoCal's FM talk station. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. We're talking about money, which we do from time to time. Deanna on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I'm really excited. Um, um, I'm 21. I just paid off all my debt, and I want to kind of start investing, but I kind of want to know... How do I start investing? How do I learn about investing? All right, all right. Uh, do you have a car loan? Let's start with that. Um, I already paid off my car. My, I own it. So you have no debt? I have no debt whatsoever. That's great. It's awesome. It feels good. I'll bet it does. I recommend it to everyone. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, you're off to a good start because that's the first place I was going to tell you to put your money. Yeah, is toward no. your debts. That's what I did first. That's great. Uh, so you should have a zero balance. Uh -huh. And and then uh, the first thing you need to do, if you haven't done it already, after paying off all your debts, is to make sure you've got six months' worth of money in the bank. Yep. I pretty much, I've been saving for about a year now, so... Um, I've got a good chunk of change. That's why I'm starting to look at investing. Great. Now, can you, uh, if you lost your job, could you be out of a job for six months? Because we are in a recession and lots of people are losing their jobs. Um, yeah, I could think I could handle six months worth of expenses. Okay. I don't have that many expenses. I go to school full time. So, you know. Right. So you can so, continue to afford to pay your tuition and your books, yeah. and you could pay your rent. Do you live yep. with your parents, or do you uh, do you no, rent a place? Yeah, I live at home. I made sure to keep that expense really low. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now what you want to do, now that you've got everything paid off, and uh, you can... And by the way, you have student loans? Uh, no, not at all. Really? No, well, I pay for it. Okay. Yeah. By the way, I was not going to recommend you pay off your student loans if you have a good rate, but... Um, no, I don't. I don't have any. Very good. So what you want to do is you want to get, uh, first, you leave that six months of money alone. Right. Leave okay. it liquid. So you yeah. take the six months, subtract that from whatever total you have. Mm -hmm. So what does that leave you with? Um, probably, uh, probably like a couple thousand. A couple of thousand dollars. Yeah, not a lot, but definitely some. All right. Now, are you looking at uh, long-term investing, short-term investing? What are you looking um, at here? Probably long term investing, you know. I kinda wanna like put money so somewhere so that it's leave it on the road if I need it or something happens. Right. Let me ask you a question. Do you pay taxes? Yes. Um oh, I, I have a full time job and everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you how much do you make working full time? Um, I make about thirty thousand. Okay. Do you have an IRA? No. All right. I Step have, one. Okay. IRA. I have an IRA. You want to start okay. an IRA. Okay. And, in fact, you want to start an IRA, if you can, uh, before April 15th. Okay. Be, be, here's why. Have you done your taxes yet? Yeah. All right. Well, maybe uh, you need to consult with whoever did your taxes regarding mm -hmm. this. Because I don't recall, and I'm not, remember, I'm not a tax expert. Right. Uh, but uh, I believe you have until you file your tax return to make your 2007 IRA contribution. Which would mean you could make one for 07 and 08. Oh, wow. Now, uh, if you uh, get yourself a Roth IRA, mm -hmm. uh, what will happen will be that money will grow uh, tax-free. And when you withdraw it, you won't have to pay a penny of tax on it uh, when you retire. Ooh. And your Roth IRA can be invested in anything. I mean, it can be invested in stocks. It can be invested in mutual funds, bonds. Uh, it can be uh, even invested in uh, gold coins or real estate, which I wouldn't recommend. But uh, <laughs> uh, the, it really, it's it's amazing what you can do. Oh, okay. So uh, my recommendation to you is that you go to one of the big companies like Fidelity or Vanguard. Vanguard's my fave. I Vanguard. happen to like Vanguard, but I also do mm -hmm. business with Fidelity and Wells Fargo. Okay. All right. And uh, you go to their website, mm -hmm. and you can they will accept an electronic signature. You can fill out the application online. Oh, that's nice. I like online. Yes. And so, <laughs> oh, yeah, so what you want to do is you want to hook up your bank account 
with an account at Vanguard. So you can just electronically transfer money over uh, to Vanguard. And you'll start with an IRA. You can put, uh, what is the max now? Is it 5000 4000 or 5000 Got to check. And again, good to check with your professionals or check online on that. But uh, you can put that amount away every year. Oh, okay. And yeah. it, it almost, if you start at 21 where you are now, it almost mm -hmm. guarantees you'll be a millionaire when you retire. Yeah, I have like a life insurance policy that I can buy, I can pull out when I turn 65. And if I don't take any money out, I'll have about 1.5 million when I retire. Uh huh. Very so. good. So your family's been making some plans with you, I, I assume. Uh, my boss does. That's I have great. A, my boss is like, uh, we need to start now for your future. And I was like, okay. Very nice. But I want to like do a little more, you know. Uh, does your company have a 401k? Um, no, I work for just like an independent guy. So. Have you asked him if he has some kind of a retirement plan available to you? Um, yeah, I don't, he says that he'd help me invest, but he doesn't really because it's like he has it's less not, than the, the minimum number of employees. Yeah, well, there's only two of us, though. I see. Okay. Yeah. Well, then, uh, a Roth IRA is your first investment. A Roth IRA. Okay. A Roth, R-O-T-H, Roth. Oh, oh, sorry. Roth, Roth IRA. So, I'll tell you what. Let's do this in pieces. Uh, okay. Go to the Vanguard.com website or mm -hmm. Fidelity. I mean, I don't, I'm not pushing any one of these. I don't get a penny from any of them. Uh, right. In fact, the... They take fees from me because I, I, I invest with them. <laughs> exactly. But go, go to one of those and uh, read uh, up on a Roth IRA and find out how to apply for one online. Cool. Now, once by the way, once you apply for an IRA, you have to decide what you're going to invest in. Okay. And one of the things you want to look at, you might want to call, whether you use Fidelity or Vanguard or whoever. Yeah. Uh, you might want to call them and ask them if they have one of the, and I, I'm sure they do. There are mutual funds. Mm -hmm. That are automatically, uh, they, they, uh, allocate assets according to what year you're likely to retire. Oh, okay. So at 21, if you assume you're going to retire at 65, 44 years from now is 2052. There's probably a, a 2050, the year mm -hmm. 2050, uh, mutual fund that okay. will automatically adjust your investments. And those I think are fantastic for an IRA. Okay. And I'm yeah. sure that Fidelity and Vanguard each have a mutual fund like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, ask them about it. I will, definitely. And then uh, next time we talk about this or on a Friday, call me back and let me know how you made out. Awesome. Thank you so much for your help. You've been a huge help. Okay, good. <laughs> Love your show. You're the best. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> have a great day. Appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Kevin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom. Kevin. First of all, let's get me hooked up with that young lady. She's got her act together. <laughs> she has. Jesus. Second of all, congratulations on such a fantastic career. It must be an absolute joy every friggin' day you get a paycheck. Absolutely. Calling, calling to you from my brand new Lexus. Speaking hands free via Bluetooth. I love every minute of it. Uh huh. Um, but. It's caused a little bit of an issue at home with the uh, the ball and chain. Why? Um, she's not in a leasing at all. I've, I've flip flop back and forth on leasing, buying. Um, I, I, I kind of feel, I want your opinion. I kind of feel it's really all about when you want to make the big, you know, balloon payment up front or in the end. And she kind of argues it's a poor man's way to get a nice car. I can kind of see, you know, her snide remark what yeah. she's getting at yeah uh throw in the mix i mean i've, I've had a, a six-year-old audi that looks like it's starting to have some issues and so that's what's prompted the decision and i scored a great deal um end of the month end of the quarter well, we're running out of time all i can tell you is i i hate to tell you i tend to agree with your wife the tom like his show